Mario uses to travel the world, and it's powered by these power moons, so you keep needing additional thresholds of them to get onto the next kingdom. And just to show off a little bit of the new moves, obviously there's the hat throw. You can make it stay in place, which is sometimes valuable. It can grab things for you. Uh, there's two kinds of coins, which we'll talk about it a, a little later on. And actually, they're in that little dialogue box. We saw Cappy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Cappy is both the, the red hat that he's wearing and also in his native form, he's a white top hat. Uh, and so one other move that's pretty cool is this circular throw. Knocks away everything. But let's get down into the city. And as you saw in the trailer, so there's the, the capture mechanic lets you take over things. It also lets you do fairly exotic things like turn into electricity to travel through wires. <laughs> So how did the capture mechanic come about? So when we were making this game, um, what we started out doing was making just a huge amount of different gameplay prototypes. And uh, this capture action was uh, just one of those prototypes. あの、みんなでこうアイデアを出し合った中に出てきたんですけども、それをそうですね、2、3日ぐらいで作って遊んでみたらものすごく面白かったので、すぐゲームのあの中心に入れようと決めました。See, I love how much it encourages that exploration and experimentation that I think the Mario games along these lines are so known for when you think about Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine. Here we've got uh, so much stuff that just looks interesting, and you're wondering, okay, what will happen if I throw my cap at it? You never really know what's going to happen, so you want to try everything just to see. Yeah, I, I definitely hope my people, while they're playing this game, they just throw their hat at everything and try all sorts of different things. <laughs> Whoops, that was a mistake. Uh, right now, normally, um, if you were following the story path of the game, you'd be talking to Mayor Pauline, who wants you to recruit musicians. There's one there. Um, but we're going to ignore that right now because there's lots and lots of things to do beyond following the main story of the game. Like possess rockets and turn into rockets and why with mustaches. You do that if you could? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's an interesting note there. So you mentioned Mayor Pauline, and I think our sharp-eyed viewers will have noticed that some of the street signs uh, are references to some Donkey Kong characters. We've got some interesting red girders going on here. I wonder, um, Kuzuma-san, if you can tell us a little bit more about this city. It's uh, got some interesting backstory. そうですね。あの、名前もそうですし、ポリンテのドンキーコングのキャラクターって何かのゲームに関係がありそうですけど、今日はちょっとあんまり詳しく言えないんですけど。So, certainly you can tell that Polly is from Donkey Kong, and the name New Donk City probably leads you to a couple of hints, but we can't get into too much of it today. And I like the shirt you're wearing, by the way. That is a snazzy Good choice shirt. Good today. Good choice today. Please look forward to hearing more about that. Uh, I gotta take the long way. Oh, good luck. <laughs> and this is interesting here where we see, uh, I mean, really throughout New Dong City and I think throughout the world, we've got these really fun playground elements where you're bouncing on things, you're jumping on things, you're swinging. Uh, can you tell our viewers a little bit more about how you came up with that kind of play mechanic in the game? Mm. ぶら下がってしてえっと飛び跳ねたりしてまあいろんなえっと環境のものになんか反応させられるんですけどえっとまあどういうふうにそういうなんか遊びばっぽい雰囲気を出せるようになんか考え方ありますかはいあのまずその
And then, you know, obviously out of that, like, different things come up, like, oh, maybe we could do this a little bit differently. Maybe this could actually work like this instead. And then we kind of add that to it, and the process just continues from there. で先ほどちょっと出たあのタクシーなんかをジャンプさせるのもあのスーパーマリオサンシャインでもちょっと似たような仕様があったのでそういうところからちょっとヒントを得ている。います。うん。And so you know you you saw before you know we were able to jump on top of the taxi and that's something that was sort of in、uh, Super Mario Sunshine at, at times so in in that way we're also getting hints from past games. <laughs> uh, can I quickly interject that、um, in the So, as I, as I mentioned, the goal right now is to recruit these musicians. And when I was first playing this game for a feedback report for the development team, I could not figure out how to get to this guy on the top of this building. You can just barely see him. He's a speck right now in that triangular building. And the way I eventually found to do it was to take a really long、oh, fall. I did that too. And、oh. that worked. Oh. And a bit to my surprise, <laughs> <laughs> and I, was, well, I wanted to know, you know, when you when you saw that report from me, you know, what was was that a problem to be solved? Was that a cool thing? What was that? The Komane was, you know, NCR's report that was written at the time. Ah, this is how you can get the band of trumpet to the top of the building. So, that was what was written. 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 <laughs> yeah, I, I did read that. I didn't know you were going to be playing that right now. <laughs> <laughs> Troublemaker. <laughs> well, I also know the real way. I'm just, I'm, or another way. <laughs> 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 でも自分でこういろんなプレイの仕方を探してもらえたらと思うんですけどもそれもスーパーマリオ64やスーパーマリオサンシャインから続くものだと思います。But you know, you found your own way to play it and like, you know, letting users, you know, play around with the game and find their own ways of doing things. That's something that, you know, goes, goes way back in 3D Mario, you know, in Super Mario 64 and Super Mario Sunshine as well. So, this is actually one of the two kingdoms that's going to be playable on the show floor. The show floor, of course, isn't open yet, so we don't have folks playing the game at this moment, but I'm really looking forward to talking to folks after they've played it because I think there's so many different ways to problem solve and find the moons in these kingdoms. I, I'm not even sure if folks will find everything over the course of the show, but it's going to be interesting to find out how different people approached completing some of these objectives. But the game encourages so much experimentation because、yeah. you aren't kicked out of the level every, every time you find a moon. There is no reason not to investigate every little thing you, you can see that might be interesting. There's no time limit, there's no, there's no disincentive. There's lots and lots of cool stuff. Whoa! Okay. Yeah, that is a very interesting change that adds, I think, to the immersion in the kingdoms when you think about Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine. Whenever you got your, sort of whatever the collectible objective was, depending on the game you were playing,、uh, you'd get bumped out of the area and you'd have to come back in. But here, since you're not going to get booted out of the kingdom when you collect a power moon, there's a lot of encouragement to just、oh, go check out that、it. weird thing you saw on the horizon because you can still continue with whatever your primary、oh, objective is. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> But then, you know, keep, keep on tracking and finding moons. Another way, reason to explore everything is that there's very, little there's very little punishment for dying. I just lost 10 coins, and you know, there's lots. So, and I get to try again right away. It's also worth mentioning that the bullet bills here are coming out with visors on, so they cannot be captured until you knock their hats off, because an enemy with a hat is the scariest thing in this game. <laughs> Fashion is very important in this、yeah. game. You've got to be conscious of your headwear. Well, careful. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently, this is not my day for this challenge. That's right, third time's a charm, right? Yeah. And if, you, if at first you don't succeed, give up on the third attempt. I'm just looking at the space where、um, we saw other sections of New Dog City and looking here.、Uh, I'm just so impressed with the texture work that's been done. I feel like every time I see a new build of this game, more and more of these textures are just jumping out at me. It's, it's Really fun to see in person. It is a gorgeous game, and we're gonna, we have some other segments later on in the, in the stream that are going to highlight some especially pretty areas. Oh, you got this. Yeah. And oh, oh, while I'm keeping my fingers and toes crossed, yes. Thank you.、Um, <laughs> One thing that we haven't mentioned yet that we probably should talk a little bit about is the fact that you're playing with Joy-Con with the wrist straps attached. Yes. And、uh, that's a really fantastic way to play this game. It, of course, supports Pro Controller and other controller options, but you can do so much with the motion controls, and throwing Cappy feels very intuitive. Yeah. I'm going to switch to a, a different、uh, section of the game where I show the Sand World, which is also playable on the show floor. So give me just a moment. Oh,、here. no worries. 
But I do love that as you're experimenting, I think we'll see folks doing that on the show floor here, so many of your gestures will affect how Cappy moves that while you're holding the Joy-Con with the wrist straps attached, you really want to just try moving your arms in different directions. Like, okay, I'm going to try throwing up, I'm going to throw down, throw out. But uh, I, I was really impressed by how well that implementation was put into play. Here we are. Yeah. Oh, this place is so pretty. So here we're in the Sand Kingdom uh, in the town of Tostarena. And uh, they have a problem now because uh, it's all frozen. Everything is cold for reasons, of course, that Mario will eventually solve. Yeah, actually, uh, if you hang still for a second, we can show his little idle animation when he's oh, cold. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> really cute. <laughs> oh, he's cold. I love oh, the locals here, too. Yeah, I think he's distracted by the, by the local dancing around. But I think if he's by himself, then he really shivers. Oh, poor Mario. Yeah. Uh, so let's see here. One thing, one thing I did want to show off is, so as we mentioned, there's two kinds of coins in this game. And for the, I believe the first time in the main, mainline Mario series, you can actually buy things with your coins. And I wanted to ask the developers how that came up, you know, that in, currency should be worth currency. So we wanted, you know, coins to be used as coins in this game, actually use them as money. <laughs> and you know, I think I think you'll agree, you know, if you go to you know a foreign land, one of the things that makes the biggest impression on you is the currency. You know, you kind of look at it and you think, wait, is this is this real? Can I use this? And since you know Mario was going around to all these different kingdoms in this game, we wanted to make sure that there was a currency for each one. And you know, they're, they're a collectible item, so you can use them to uh, buy different outfits or buy souvenirs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's always fun to buy souvenirs, right? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And speaking of shopping, we are now yeah. in Crazy Cap. So there's two, there's two kinds of coins, as we mentioned. Um, the, the purple ones are unique to the, the local kingdom. The yellow ones are, can be used in any shop. Uh, I'm going to buy, because the, the guy at the, at the door said, I, maybe I should, uh, I'm not living up to their dress code. Maybe I should buy some clothes to uh, fit in better. I'm going to buy a, a local sombrero and poncho. And wait till you see how adorable Mario looks. Being adorable, I just love the shopkeeper. Yeah, and their huge stack of hats. He's so cute. And you can see some of the, the souvenirs you can buy there that you can use to decorate the inside of the ship. Nice. And now I'm rocking this look. And let's go try that door again. So my capabilities are the same. You know, I still have, it's still Cappy, even though he's turned into a, a, a different kind of hat now. He can turn into any kind of headwear, apparently. The, uh, exotic superpower. <laughs> and uh, all right, so I go over and talk to this guy. Let's see if you meet the expectations now. <laughs> Ooh, snappy and lively. Snappy and lively. I think what the hat is the one and the poncho is the other. All right. And this is, of course, what the goal I was working toward all this time. <laughs> I love all these little moments of surprise where you never really know what's going to happen yeah. when you, you get into I want to get in the room? I don't know. I wanted, to get, I wanted to get in this room so I could play a guitar. You want to get in because it's locked. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so then we're going to move on to some more traditional uh, 3D Mario gameplay over this direction. Now that you are terribly well-dressed, it's time to go do some exploring. Yeah. And, and Bowser's footprints, I must be on the right track. <laughs> so notice that by using the motion controls, I can actually use the little homing function on the hat more easily. It is possible with the, the button controls only, but it's much more difficult. All right, the classic Goomba. Yeah. And let's just do a big one for, for that. And yeah. Well, and that's, uh, I guess, something folks are probably noticing here. So you're not capturing those Goomba. It's, it's not every single enemy that's capturable. That's true. Um, you've got to find the special ones. Yeah. And a lot of it's uh, having a good eye and 
just experimenting a lot with the cap. I think they're a shade bigger, the ones you can capture, but I'm not positive about that. Nice. So bullet bills, of course, are useful because you can fly with them. And, and now I've got to very quickly capture my ride back. And with bullet bills, they, you can only capture them for a limited amount of time because at some point they're just going to blow up. Yeah. So you have to be a little mindful of what you're doing. Yeah, you only get so much time with the explosive guys. All right, and then almost to one of my favorite bits in this level. Oh, yeah, the, okay. the next bit you're coming up to just yeah. blew my mind the first time I saw it. So this long. place has these murals that look like they're decorated in this cool old-school old aesthetic. And I'm just going to go right on in. And I've still got my costume. <laughs> so, um, Koizuma san and Murakura-san, I think we definitely need to hear a little bit more background about why you added this into the game, because it's so cool, but it's so unexpected as well, I think. Um, so we wanted to make something that would be, you know, sort of a contrast with the 3D stages that you're able to explore very freely. You know, the 2D, the 2D spaces are kind of more confined. They're more precise. You, you know, it's more like kind of, uh, you know, sort of traditional platforming. Hmm. And, but also within the 2D stages, as you can see, we wanted to have a lot of different variety. And of course, you know, with the visuals, we're hoping it's something, you know, the people who enjoyed kind of those classic nostalgic ah. games also get a kick out of as well. So one thing I'd love to show off when we're getting out to avoid the end of this space is um, just how much the music changes when we're transitioning back and forth. Because yeah. I know we've been chatting, maybe it's hard for some folks to hear uh, what's been going on here, but if we just pop in and out of that warp pipe, it's a pretty impressive transition when the music it changes. Oh, but there's no warp pipe up here. Just start so, off. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, but you can now see that it's more of a, a naturalistic instrument. So I'm going to skip ahead and uh, show off uh, the last part of this, this scenario. Uh, OK, so for that, I will need these. Wrist straps, people, always wrist straps. Yes. I'll set to jump in. OK. Yeah, it's worth mentioning, too, that we're only covering a, a tiny bit of what is in this kingdom. There's so much yeah, more to do and explore. There's just a ridiculous amount. All right, so here we are. This is much later in the level. Uh, I've still got my snappy outfit, though. And watch these bullet bills transition out of the 2D. And then I'm going to use one to break open this wall. So another thing that's really handy about the bullet bills as a capture target that you'll see here, um, when you're trying to target for really precision flying, it's got a little bit of a headlamp. Ah, oh, no. no you're, oh, oh, I'm doomed. That's OK. <laughs> but it's got a little bit of a headlamp, so you can kind of use see that to line pointing. yourself yeah. up. Mm -hmm. It's super handy. That's OK, because we get to see this cute little 2D to 3D transitioning. I love that. Bills. It's so cool. All right. All right, you got this. Yeah. All right, here we go. And with the bullet bills, you can also give yourself little speed bursts as well. Uh, shaking the Joy-Con will let you go a little bit further. So it's worth experimenting once you get a feel for the timing of how long yeah. a bullet bill will last. It's kind of like driving a car that doesn't have any brake pedal. It, you, can, you can go faster, you can steer, <laughs> but that's all you can do. And All right, so up here we're about to confront one of the Brutals. And uh, po folks may have seen them in our original uh, teaser trailer for this game. Um, they are an evil wedding planning firm, uh, and I'd love to hear more from the, uh, the developers about how they came to be and what your favorite Brutal is. ブライダルズ団体がこのケコンを企画してるグループだし、ですけど、一番気に入りのブライダルズは誰かいますか？そうですね。あの彼らはあのクッパに雇われてクッパの結婚式を成功させようとしています。
So they've, you know, as you kind of said, they've they've been employed by Bowser. They're in charge of making sure his wedding goes off without a hitch. They're very serious about their work. Respect that. Their work ethic is admirable. <laughs> And you know, my favorite is uh, Topper, the kind of uh, shorter one who has that uh, uh, green top hat. Yeah, guy in green. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Topper. And about you, uh, Kozumi san, do you have a favorite? Kozumi san, no, 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 this is really good timing because the character I like the most is the one you're fighting right now, Harriet. She has this great contrast between her cute appearance and like how devilish she is. She's sort of like the uh, tricky little sister of the group here. Her attacks are really fun to watch as well, yeah. especially when she starts flying around. <laughs> yeah. And it's worth mentioning, you fight each of the Brutals a few times, um, but their, their tactics get more and more intense and, and dangerous. Uh, uh, but I'll be honest, having planned a wedding last year, I would take the help of evil wedding planner. Yeah, I mean, monsters. any evil help is better than no help. <laughs> and they're very dedicated to their work. And they're, they're willing they to fight your enemies for you, and that's pretty great. Oh, nice. There we go. Nicely done. Thank you. <laughs> oh, God, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, <too bad. laughs> sorry, Harriet. Now she'll be back. All right, so that's a grand moon worth three power moons. And there we see Cappy in his natural state yep, as well. There he is, celebrating with Mario. Nice. Nice. All right, so that's what we have for gameplay for right now. But yeah, we did we have one more little uh, feature, I, I believe. Yes, we've got uh, some new goodies that have turned up here on stage with us. Uh, so these are the amiibo for the game. We've got uh, Princess Peach, Bowser, and Mario in their wedding outfits. And uh, I just need to ask you guys about the development process for these, because the, the detail of the sculpting is incredible. It must have been a very interesting process. 